Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to Valonia United Methodist Church. We are a church dedicated to loving our community as we are through words, actions, and presence. I'm Pastor Chad Hornsby, and we welcome you to worship this morning as you are, as you were, and as you will be. We have a couple of announcements. First, make sure that you find the attendance pads and sign in today. Uh, we'd like to know that you are here. Also, if you're trying to have something to focus your prayers on during worship, pray for the breeze that was here a minute ago, um, that it comes back and stays. So, um, otherwise, I think Pastor Andrea has a couple things to say about VBS and others. Sarah, we forgot you were very tall. <laughs> So for VBS, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a rundown of our numbers this week. We had a really exciting, very fun Camp Firelight where we had 30 kids throughout the week here at the church. We had right around 20 teen and tween volunteers and right around 30 adult volunteers every single night. So we averaged right around 60 to 70 people here at the church every night loving on each other and spreading the word of God. Some other fun information that I have is if you don't know, during VBS week, we challenge the kids to raise money and raise um, food items for our blessing box and the Spirit of Alonia Food Pantry. Um, this year, their prize was to water balloon me. You may have seen that video on Facebook. Um, but in doing that, they raised 492 food items and they raised a hundred and ninety three dollars and twenty six cents so I am super proud of them and then switching gears really fast because you guys know I have my hand in a lot of a pot um, if you were here and you remember I made the announcement that OMP is sponsoring our youth group this year to the tune of $7,200, um, but that came with the stipulation of us giving a meal for neighbor night of Mamel week, which is not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. Um, and so Miss Jean has a list. It's that green slip that you handed out if you're able to help um, donate anything or even come on that Wednesday night to help. I really encourage if you want to see what an OMP worship is like, come help serve food and stay for worship afterwards because it's neighbor night and we've moved up worship just for people to stay and worship with our um, community builders. Um, I think that's all I have. No. The, the feeding will occur at the Maumelle United Methodist Church. Um, Ms. Jean will have all of the information for that if you want to help her serve. I'll be directing that week, so I'll be a little bit out of pocket and not as available as normal. I believe that is all of our announcements this morning, so let's turn to God in prayer as we begin worship. O oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth, to comfort, to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the works to which you have called us, that we may not fear the coming of night when we shall resign into your hands the task which you have committed to us. So may we worship you not with our lips at this hour, but in word and deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now, if you'll please stand if, as you are able and join me in singing. If you'll look at the uh, bulletin, there should be the words in there for all creatures of our God and King. We're going to do all the verses that are listed there. Even if I start singing the wrong words, you just keep following along with what's in the bulletin, okay? <laughs> all creatures of our God and King.
Now, if you'll sing this little light of mine, we're going to do all three verses. Feel free to stand up if you need to sit. Feel free to sit as well, but this will pep you up a little bit. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. on going keep on repeating that okay if the children would come forward yes the children come forward. yes if the children would come forward right down front we've got a special message for you this morning children and youth and young at heart if you feel like it Here's my favorite part of the week. Do you guys have any jokes? Oh, no? We're good? We're good? Okay. Maybe jokes. Really quick, one of my favorite jokes is, why did the chicken cross the road? If you were at VBS, you heard this one. Why did the chicken cross the road? I know. A shortcut? Maybe. Because it wanted to get to the other side? Also, maybe. Well, I just like to say, you know, because. My sins have been forgiven now my 
Good morning. Hey, we just want to um, recognize everyone. Well, Adria recognized everyone that helped. We had lots of volunteers that helped with Vacation Bible School. And on behalf of Pastor Chad and myself and everyone in Children's Ministry, we wanted to thank Tiffany for doing all the AV for Vacation Bible School. not just AV. She's very artistic, so she does other things, too. There you go. And we wanted to thank uh, Miss Jean for leading, heading up the kitchen and all the food and snacks for the week. <coughs> and um, Andrea, which was our fearless leader for the whole time, and we really appreciate it. It was a lot of work. Thank you, Andrea. Please join me in our congregational prayers printed in your bulletin. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure in disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine. So be it. In the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Exodus chapter 18, verses 13 through 27. The next day Moses sat as a judge for the people, while the people stood around Moses from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, What's this that you're doing for the people? Why do you sit alone while all the people are standing around you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When a conflict arises between them, they come to me, and I judge between the two of them. I also teach them God's regulations and instructions. Moses' father-in-law said to him, What are you are doing isn't good. You'll end up totally wearing yourself out, both you and these people who are with you. The work is too difficult for you. You can't do it alone. Now listen to me and let me give you some advice. And may God be with you. Your role should be to represent the people before God. You should bring their disputes before God yourself. Explain the regulations and instructions to them. Let them know the way they're supposed to go and the things they're supposed to do. But you should also look among all the people for capable persons who respect God. They should be trustworthy and not corrupt. Set these persons over the people as officers of groups of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. They should bring every major dispute to you, but they should decide all of the minor cases themselves. This will be much easier for you, and they will share your load. If you do this and God directs you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will go, be able to go back to their homes much happier. Moses listened to his father-in-law's suggestions and did everything that he said. Moses chose capable persons from all of Israel and set them as leaders over the people, as officers over groups of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They acted as judges for the people at all times. They would refer the hard cases to Moses, but all the minor cases they decided themselves. And then Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law and Jethro went back to his own country. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading and hearing of scripture. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture this morning comes from the book of Exodus as well, chapter 19, starting at verse 1, ending at verse 8. 
On exactly the third month anniversary of the Israelites leaving the land of Egypt, they came into the Sinai Desert. They traveled from Rephidim, came into the Sinai Desert, and set up camp there. Israel camped there in front of the mountain while Moses went up to God. The Lord called him from the mountain. This is what you should say to Jacob's household and to declare to the Israelites. You saw what I did in, to the Egyptians and how I lifted you up on eagles' wings and brought you to me. So now, if you faithfully obey me and stay true to my covenant, you will be my most precious possession out of all people, since the whole earth belongs to me. You will be a kingdom of priests for me and a holy nation. These are the words you should say to the Israelites. So Moses came down, called together the people's elders, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all responded with one voice. Everything that the Lord has said, we will do. Moses reported to the Lord what the people had said. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Have you ever been in one of those times of life where you're just trying to figure yourself out? You know, sometimes we think of that as like your early and mid-20s when you're like getting into the real world, figuring out what life looks like. Sometimes that's because you have a sudden change of job or you move to a new place for some reason. But there are these moments in our life where we have to re-figure out who we are. We're not always the same people that we were yesterday. One of the things that I've kind of been in awe of this summer is I managed to keep a cilantro plant alive for longer than a week. And I'm pretty proud of this. Now, if you know how cilantro grows, it's really hard to kill it. Um, but what I did not know is that at the end of like May and starting in June, cilantro changes into coriander. I did not know those were the same plants. They don't even taste the same. But there's something really beautiful about the fact that the cilantro starts out doing one thing, and over the course of time, and because of its environment, it shifts into something different. In much the same way, I think that's what the Israelites are going through today as they are in the wilderness, and they are hitting their third month anniversary of being in the wilderness. Now, one, I think it's always significant when the Bible is very specific about things, because there's a lot of things that the Bible paints in watercolor. So when it gives you a direct line of saying it was exactly three months, that means something. Now, I like to think, you know, have you, if you, after a move, about 90 days in is when you've gotten most of the boxes unpacked or some of the boxes unpacked. And you start thinking about like, all right, where do things go? What does this life look like in this new place? Hey, we started doing some things when we first moved here. Is this how we want it to go for the rest of the time we live here? Maybe this is an experience I have as a pastor because I move around a lot. But what does it mean that they're saying, hey, here's this three-month check-in? I think that it's trying to point out to us that, hey, we've gotten kind of comfortable in the routine. We, you know, we wander in the wilderness, we camp out here, we take instructions, we do things. What all has happened to us in the past three months? Looking back and seeing, oh yeah, well, you know, there was this miraculous thing where God parted the Red Sea. There was this, and we got to escape. There was this moment where God shows up to us as a pillar of fire. We've seen that. Oh yeah, there was the time that God came and there was manna and quail in the wilderness so that we'd have something to eat. And now, we're figuring out what it means to be the people of God. What are we doing following? What is our end goal? We've made it through the basics of survival, but now what are we going to do to thrive? And I think that really boils down to three things. I think it boils down to who we are, whose we are, and why we are. So first of all, this second scripture we read this morning is about God setting up a covenant with the people, a new one. He set up a covenant with Abraham and Isaac, and they had these rules and everything, and now God is saying, all right, let's make a new one. If you do what I say, you will become my people, not just a family, but you will become my people. Now, covenant is kind of one of those tricky words that is really churchy. But what God is effectively doing here is creating a divine pinky swear with the Israelite people that I am going to continue to take care of you just as I have been doing. 
But now I want you to reciprocate that relationship. I want you to be a part of what I'm doing, not just people who receive from me. This might also sound familiar because in our communion liturgy, every month, we always say something to the effect of once we were no people and now we are your people. It, it, communion is then a reminder of this covenant God has made first with the Israelites and with us that we are God's prized possession. That we have a responsibility to follow along with where God is leading and to see who we are. Beloved children of God. We are a people of God gathered together for, making of the, for the making of disciples for the transformation of the world. That is the mission statement of the United Methodist Church. It is, we say every Sunday that we are a church dedicated to showing up to our community through our words, actions, and presence. And I think that's really important that we say it that way because we say that it's not just about we want people to come to our church so our numbers are bigger. It's not about we want to show up and tell people nice things or tell people how to get into heaven, but what we are saying is that we are here for our community to be people who show encouragement, who show kindness, who show love to those who need it the most. That was the whole purpose of VBS this week, to show up, to be there for people. We say that we're here to show up for our community and our actions, our works of service, the things that we do for the church, not because we get paid for it, not because it's what are for any benefit for ourselves, not to be seen, but because we know other people need to be seen. We know that there is a kingdom of God that is being built here in Bologna that we have an intrinsic part of. Last week we talked about how God doesn't just poof away the problems of no water. God took Moses, God took the staff, God said, let's go and do this. You know, there were times that I was sitting there looking at VBS this week that I thought, you know, I don't know what's going to come out of this. I'm not sure what, what's going to happen here. And then, it was usually about that moment that I got bonked on the head with the staff, and God said, look at that one. And there was a kid that said, I've never been to church before. I've never been in a church building before. I'm so glad to be here. I had a kid run up and hug me. I didn't even know what his name was yet. He was just, I'm really glad I'm here. Isn't that so meaningful that even in those moments where we're not sure what's happening, there's something happening? You know, as we get closer to OMP time of the year, I think about what it means to go on mission trips and what it means to do mission in our community. And there is this really old way of thinking about mission that mission is something the church does to people or the church does for people and that we go and we try to save souls or we try to fix things because people need our help. And that's not quite what mission is. Just like VBS is mission and outreach, we are changed by the things we do. When we show up and are present for people, we learn something about ourselves too. We learn that we are not service for, but we are in service with other people. In short, who we are and why we are is our mission to make sure people know that they are loved by God and that this place is a place they can go to feel that love. So this week at VBS, there was a lot of learning some Bible stories. We hit a lot of the really good ones. We got Ruth. We got Jesus calming the storm. We did all of these things, and it was so much fun to see the kids learn these stories, for the, some of them for the first time. And the camp call-out that we used all week we were, was Psalm, from Psalm 56, verse 3, to trust God to lead the way. And you know, I think that whoever wrote the curriculum must have been thinking about the adults too, because when we were willing to go and willing to show up for these kids, a lot changed. Perspectives changed. The realization that we did a lot. I know Andrea will not tell people this, but she told me this. 
This week, while she was leading VBS and running the whole thing, she was also working really hard on school. Yesterday, she apparently stayed, got up at 10, started working, and wrote like two papers, multiple discussion posts, and did a presentation. I don't know of a lot of people that are in grad school that are willing to sacrifice a whole week of a semester to really dial in and show up for these kids. And she didn't do it half-heartedly. None of the volunteers were there half-heartedly. They showed up, they cared about the kids, and those of you at home who were praying, I can tell that no one was praying half-heartedly, but they were there for this mission because our community needs us. We may not be the biggest, we may not have the most money, but we are an important part of our community because the work we do is work that only we can do. This week, when we, every day we would go a little bit further into what it means to trust God to lead the way. It was not just about trusting God blindly, but it was trusting God to give us peace, to share wisdom with us, spark joy, and so on and so on. It's all important trusting God in the wilderness of our lives when we're setting up camp and finding our way in the world is about more than just saying, yeah, I'll go, but it's having the faith that God's going to do more than just send us somewhere. But we're going to be equipped as we go. Our first scripture this morning talks about Moses being, the ju being a judge. Now, I think that this time in the Bible is really interesting historically because it's effectively God sets up a little government in the wilderness and says all you need is a judicial branch. You will just have someone there to arbitrate between what is going wrong. And then like the book of Judges, that is what it's about. It's about these people that Moses starts appointing and saying, all right, you take care of the disputes over here. You just take care of the disputes over here. And it could be anything from a property dispute to someone had wronged someone else. And all of these things were under the umbrella of well, this is what we need to do to take care of the community. It was a community designed around the principle of conflict resolution. I think that's really awesome. Because how often do we just avoid conflict, but instead, in the world God envisions, the thing we focus on first and most important is having someone designated to help us resolve conflict. Moses is visited by his father-in-law, who says, hey, you are going to burn yourself out if you do not calm down. Have any of y'all ever received someone coming and saying, hey, you're going to burn yourself out if you don't chill out a little bit, find some help? There's always this idea that, well, I could do this by myself. And just because you can doesn't really mean you should. Those are two different things. As I was reading this and I was reading about Jethro, I was thinking about my dad on, and since it's Father's Day. And some of the things I learned from him as I was getting ready. And, you know, I'm at a stage in my life where I'm starting to figure out a few things. And then there are still some things that it's like, I need to call dad to ask how I do this. Um, when I moved into my house that I'm living in now, all the doors did not open. If it got a little too hot, the doors just kind of jammed and stuck. And I'm sure dad gets a little confused as to why I need help figuring out some of this stuff. Because obviously you just clean it, right? Didn't know that. But one of the things I remember the most about what dad taught me was always to work smarter, not harder. And this must be a perpetual problem for people because that's effectively what Jethro tells Moses. You need to work smarter, not harder. There is no need for you to do all of this. There is no way that you're going to be able to sustain this. But what you need to do is start finding people that you can assign the responsibility of taking care of some of the smaller matters. Then you handle the stuff that no one else can figure out. In much the same way, this is what the church should be. A group of people coming together so that they can figure out what everyone's, struggle, or what everyone's skill set is and use that for the benefit of the kingdom of God. The fancy theology word for what it means to be the church is called ecclesiology. Ology just means study of. Ecclesia is the Greek word that means gathering. 
You see, the church has never been about the building, but from the earliest days when we're starting to describe what this is, it's always been the gathering of people called by God for mission in the world. John Wesley put this kind of in the only a way John Wesley would put this kind of in an aggressive way. And he said, there is no more such thing as a solitary Christian as a holy adulterer. Which is one of those things that you're like, wow, John, that probably didn't win you very many friends. But he has a point. No Christian is an island. You can't do ministry by yourself. You need a community. We all need one another to gather together because when we're really trying to make this thing work, we can trust God. But part of trusting God is remembering that God has put, given us all different skill sets. One of the things we talked about in my church leadership class a couple years ago was that a lot of churches start from what is the problem. We start from this mindset of there is a lack in our community. What do we need? But they're finding that the churches that are thriving aren't starting from what do we not have, but they're asking the question of what do we already have? It's called asset mapping is the fancy term for it. But effectively what it is is you have people write down the three things they're best at. And you say, what can you do? And people are finding that as they do this, they're not running into as many problems of, man, this just doesn't work anymore like it used to. But they're finding out, oh, wait, these three people really like cooking too. And so now Miss Jean has some help. They're finding out that these three people are really skilled at working with children. And so now we have more children's people. They're finding out that People have skills and want to use them. And so we ask people, what are you wanting to do? What do you want to learn? What do you feel called to? And it's filling all the needs. It's trusting that we don't have to live in a place where we're worried about what we're missing. But when we trust that there is enough and that God's got our back, there's no need to worry anymore. This is what it means to find our identity. This is what we're called to do. This is the covenant we've made with God. That we will be given gifts. And we just have to put them to use. And maybe our gifts on their own don't seem like they're that impressive. Maybe we think that they're fantastic. And at the end of the day, we are all only made better by working together as a community. Because that is what we are gathered here to do to be the church out in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks. Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in affirming our faith as it is written in the Old and New Testament. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. One of the things that it means to be church is to come together and to share our joys and concerns with one another. We want to lift up Mr. Gordon Higgins with his health concerns this week, as well as Miss Dora Caulfield as she recovers from her car accident, as well as Nina Butler's family, John Nichols' cousin, mourning the loss of her husband, David Butler. We also want to lift up the family and friends of Bill Young, who joined the church triumphant on June the 8th as well as Karen Chikowski, a friend of the Spitz, who joined the church triumphant on June 7th. 
We want to lift up Miss Ellen Bell, who is in the hospital again, as well as continued prayers for Ginger Epley, friend Melody Claxton, who suffers from cancer and other health concerns. At this time, I invite us into a moment of prayer together. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the ability to come together and to worship you, to share our joys and our concerns with one another. We ask that as we proclaim what we hold on our hearts, that we feel your presence, comforting us and guiding us through the wildernesses of our lives. God, we give you thanks for all those who have served as paternal figures in our lives, those who have taught us, those who have guided us, those who have shown your image in their lives. Holy God, as we bring our offering to you today, we ask that you take this offering and use it for the building of your kingdom here and around the world. We offer all these prayers in the name of the risen Christ, our Savior, Redeemer, and Friend, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, you guys to stand if you're able uh, to sing our final song good good father the words are uh, in your bulletin
As a reminder, if you donated anything for VBS and you haven't picked it up yet, if you could pick it up after church today, but receive this benediction. Remember, beloved, we do not go out to, or we do not leave the church, but we go out to be the church. May the love of God be with us always. Amen. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am.